I want to talk to you today about speak God's word, unleash God's power. Say that with me. Speak God's word, unleash God's power. Let's look at this text in Acts 4, beginning at verse 29. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that your bondservants may speak your word with all confidence. Notice that, speak your word. While you extend your hand to heal, that's what happens when we speak God's word, and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. You know, the Bible is the word of God. In 1999, Dr. Paige Patterson was the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. And Dr. Patterson asked my predecessor here at Bellevue Baptist Church, Dr. Adrian Rogers, to head up a committee to update and rewrite the doctrinal statement for the Southern Baptist Convention. It's called the Baptist Faith and Message. And I had the privilege of serving on that committee of 15 people. And we were updating the former Baptist Faith and Message, which was written back in Herschel Hobbs Day in 1963. So just under 40 years earlier. One of the crucial areas that we updated was the statement on the Bible, the scriptures. And here's what we as Southern Baptists believe about the Bible. And let me read it to you from the Baptist Faith and Message 2000. The Holy Bible was written by men divinely inspired and is God's revelation of himself to man. It is a perfect treasure of divine instruction. It has God's for its, God for its author, salvation for its end, and truth without any mixture of error for its matter. Therefore, all Scripture is totally true and trustworthy. Can I have an amen in the house of God? It reveals the principles by which God judges us and therefore is and will remain to the end of the world, the true center of Christian union and the supreme standard by which all human conduct, creeds, and religious opinions should be tried. All Scripture is a testimony to Christ, who is himself the focus of divine revelation. One of the reasons people ask me over the years, why are you part of the Southern Baptist Convention? Because we believe the Bible Amen. is the Word of God, and that Jesus is the Son of God, and he's the only way to heaven. When you read the Bible, you're literally reading the Word of God. When you teach or preach it, you're preaching and teaching the Word of God. When you pray it and speak it, when you speak the Bible, you're speaking the very Word of God. And there's power in that. There's power in that. A few months ago, I was on an airplane and I was just sitting there, minding my own business. We we're loading up. And all of a sudden, I recognized that there was a group of people who were involved in the occult, and they sat down all around me. And uh, no, it's okay. I love, I love everybody, amen? I, you, you, I pray for those people, amen? And I love them, want them to see them get saved. And so they sat down, and uh, you say, how do you know they were in the occult? I knew, I knew. They, they're just certain things that you look for, and I'll talk to you about that sometime. Don't have time to talk about it right now. But uh, I knew that they were part of the occult. And uh, I just thought, you know, this would be a great time to pray for them and to pray the Word of God over them. And so just quietly, I didn't make, I didn't start saying, oh, you're part of the occult. I didn't say that. I just said, uh, Lord Jesus, it's pretty obvious that these folks are uh, part of the occult. I don't know if they're Wiccans 
warlocks, witches, Satanists, I don't know. But Lord, I know that Jesus died for their sins, and I know that if they'll repent and believe in Christ, they can be saved. So I just started praying over you. said, what do you pray for people when you pray for people like that? Well, the first thing I do is I pray for God to bind every demon from them and that the Holy Spirit would be loosed over them. You say, where in the world do you get that? Glad you asked. I pray Matthew 18, 18. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. You ought to get to know the fact that you have the authority as a Christian in Christ to bind demonic spirits and to loose over them the Holy Spirit of God. About four people of you got it, all right. You say, I, I don't want to do that. That's scary. It's not scary. It's part of Christianity. And then you pray that all demonic strong men be bound in their properties, their topos, be plundered. Mark 3, 27, but no one can enter the strong man's house and plunder his property unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. And then pray for them to be overwhelmed with the knowledge of God's love. That's what people in the occult don't realize about God. They don't realize that God loves them. And look at me. We need to love them. We don't love anybody's sin, but we love every sinner. Amen? And even if they're involved in the occult. And so I would just pray over them. John three sixteen, the greatest Bible verse in the, whole, in the whole Bible about the love of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever, even people in the occult, believe in Him would not perish but have eternal life. And then I pray that God would convict them of their lostness and the, their need for salvation. John 16, 8 says, and He, talking about the Holy Spirit, when He comes will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Judgment. And then I pray that they'd repent, turn from their sins, and turn to Jesus. Uh, that's from Acts 3, 19 and 20. Therefore, repent and return, that your sins may be washed away, that times or seasons of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, so that He may send Jesus the Christ appointed to you. And then I pray that they would say, believe savingly in Jesus and make Him the Lord of their lives. Acts 16, 31. They said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. You and your household. That is, if your household, if they believe, they'll be saved too. Paul and Silas were speaking to the jailer there at Philippi. And he said, look, what must I do to be saved? And the Bible says that that's what they told him. Just believe in the Lord Jesus, you'll be saved. And then pray that they would, these Satanists would stop cursing Jesus and start calling on his name to be saved. Romans 10, 13. Whoever, everybody say whoever. Yeah. How many of you are glad for a whoever gospel, amen? Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, I don't know that I prayed all those verses for them, but those are the kind of things you can pray for anybody, but especially people who have demonic strongholds in their lives. You know, the drag queens at the Olympics are not our enemy. I'll say that again. The drag queens anywhere are not our enemy. The devil is our enemy. Amen. We're to love everybody. We don't love their sin, but aren't you glad that we can love sinners and share the gospel with them so they can be saved and set free? Amen? Amen. They're never going to get saved if you just trash them all the time. And I'm not saying accept their, I don't accept the immorality that they portray. I'm not saying that, but I am saying you've got to look beyond that and see that they are a soul, and there is nothing more important to God than a soul. And we need to pray for them that they will be convicted of sin and righteousness and judgment and call upon the name of the Lord. Those people in the occult, just like those people that dress as drag queens, they are in bondage. They are victims. They are slaves of demons, and we need to pray for them. Pray that God will move in their lives. And I want to ask, say this to you, if we have anybody here today in the occult, you come to Bellevue as often as you want to, because we want you to hear the Word of God. 
We want you to be under the name of Jesus, and we want you to repent and turn to the Lord. And we want you to know that the one that you're following, Satan, is a liar, and he is going to be totally defeated in the end. The Bible says in Revelation 20, verse 10, the devil who deceived them. See, you've been deceived if you're in the occult. The devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone. You want to know where the devil's going? He, God made the lake of fire for the devil and his demons and brimstone, where the beast, that's the Antichrist and the false prophet also are, and they will be tormented night and day forever and ever. These folks that talk about, you know, well, you know, hell is not going to be forever. It's, you know, it's just going to be just a quick death. No, hell is forever and ever and ever. And the devil and all those who follow him will be there forever. And I would encourage you Christians, there's power in the Word of God. I would just encourage you to walk through your home and just get some scripture verses and pray them over your house. Walk through your home. Speak God's word and unleash God's power. You don't need nasty movies playing in your home. That releases demonic spirits. You need to be speaking the word of God over your home. If you've got a rebellious child, I'll tell you what to do. Take them to school. Make sure they're there. Then come back to the house and go up into their room and just pray over their room. And speak over their room. I can remember when one of our kiddos was not living for the Lord. I can remember. Now, you're going to know who it was when I, I say his room. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I only got one his anyway. So I can remember, though, doing a spread eagle over his bed, crying. I said, Jesus, I know he's saved, but he's not doing right. This is back when he was a teenager. And you know what he told me after he got right with God? He said, Daddy, Every time I do something wrong, I got caught. He said, and I knew I wasn't doing right. But every time I did wrong, I got caught. I said, well, I didn't catch you. I sick the Lord on you. <laughs> and the Lord caught you. And don't you want that for your children? Pray over them. Pray over their room. Pray the word of God. Pray over their room. And if your child tries to lock you out of their room, just remind them they don't have a room. If you pay for the house, guess what? Every room is yours. They don't have any secrets. They can't lock anything up. If they lock something up too tight, I'll just break it open, amen? That's my house, amen? Not just my house, it's the Lord's house. Well, what if they get mad? Well, what if they do? You're not their friend. You're their parent. And they need your help. Lock me out of the room. Fat chance of that. I own the door. I'll open it when I want to. I pay the bill. It's my house. Some of y'all are squeaking on that one, all right. Just go home and speak God's Word and unleash God's power. Walk through your house. Don't just clean it with a vacuum and a dust rag. Cleanse your house with the Word of God. Some of you have bosses at work, co-workers that are hard to work with, and uh, they profane God, and they're ungodly. They use foul language. On your break time, I'm being serious, lunchtime, break time, walk through your office area and just speak the Word of God over it. Just have some verses. Carry them with you on little cards or a notebook 
or an iPad and just calmly walk over your office space and speak the Word of God. Some of you live in neighborhoods where people are noisy and they're profane. Just walk through your neighborhood and speak God's Word and unleash God's power. You say, well, I'm afraid to walk through my neighborhood. Then drive through your neighborhood, all right? (laughs) And speak God's Word and proclaim His name. Unleash His power. I'm telling you, when you speak the Word of God, how did God create the universe? He spoke it into existence. Walk through this church building and speak God's Word. Pray God's Word over every room. Speak God's Word and unleash His power. And you'd better do this when you go into a hotel room because you have no clue what has happened in that very room that you're in. Every time Don and I go into a hotel room, we don't even hardly put our bags down before we pray over the room and say, Lord, this is paid for with your money, and we dedicate this room unto you, and we speak the Word of God over this room. We speak the Word of God over these beds, over the shower, Lord, over even the Coca-Colas that are in the little thing over there. God, we we pray for the whole thing. Bind every demonic spirit and we pray scripture. And then leave the television off. Three amens on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. While we were in New York State at Niagara Falls, Don and I were amazed at the, we are just amazed at the lack of Bible-believing churches. No wonder our nation is so secular. We're dying spiritually and morally due to a lack of spiritual salt and light. You and I are Christians. We're salt of the earth. We're the light of the world. And we need to let that salt penetrate wherever we go. We need that light to shine everywhere we go. Wherever you go, be the salt, be the light, and start speaking God's Word, unleashing His power. We all need the Lord, and we find Him in His Word. I was a little bit shocked at a study LifeWay Lifeway Research showed among Protestant church members. Only one out of three say that they read the Bible every day. That blows my mind. One out of three. Only one out of four read the Bible a few times a week. And one out of eight Protestant church members said, we never read the Bible. No wonder our nation is in a spiritual decline. Dr. Rogers used to say, no Bible, no breakfast. You say, oh, I can't do that. I gotta gotta have my breakfast. You need the Bible way more then you need breakfast. Now, I'm not a legalist, neither was Dr. Rogers, but I think that's good. How many of you believe that you ought to read the Bible every day? Anybody believe that? How many of you breathe air every day? Please raise your hand. Yeah. How many of you eat food every day? Don't lie. Don't lie. How many of you eat food every day? How many of you drink liquids every day? Anybody? If you don't breathe, eat, and drink, you're going to die physically. And if you don't breathe in the Word of God, eat the Word of God, drink the Word of God, you're going to die spiritually. You know, if you don't make deposits in your bank account, you don't need to write any checks or use your check card. You know why? Because... You won't have sufficient funds. And some of you don't have sufficient spiritual funds because you have not made any deposits into your heart by reading and taking in the Word of God. You can memorize Scripture. Navigator's topical memory system is a great way to do that. And you can take in Scripture by reading the Bible, meditating on Scripture, praying God's Word for others, and sharing God's Word. When you do that, I believe 
the Holy Spirit moves in a powerful, powerful way. And one of the reasons, you know, I have people tell me all the time, you know, when I walk into Bellevue, there's just an anointing even in that sanctuary. I've had people tell me, Brother Steve, I, I just come into this room and I sense the presence of God. That's not me. It's the Word of God. There's an anointing on the Word of God. And for all these years, way back to 1989, November, when this room was opened up, every week, two or three times, the Word of God, with the anointing of God's Word, is spoken over this room. And I believe that's why there's an anointing in this room. Daniel Harris, that was up there baptizing today, he came into this room as a lost young man about eight years ago, sat down on a Sunday night and said, Brother Steve, I felt the presence of God. He just came and sat down. He didn't know what to do. He was about to walk out. And then God said, no, go sit back down. And he, came, he sat down and he got saved. And now he's baptizing people up there in the baptistry. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Now in Acts 3 and 4, we have the story behind our text today. The apostles Peter and John went to the temple in Jerusalem to pray. And on their way, they met a lame man, and he was begging, asking for money. I love what Peter said. I don't have any silver. I don't have any gold, but I got something better than that. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And immediately the man stood up, and he walked. His first walk, he went into the temple, and he didn't know how to act in church. The Bible says he was walking and leaping and praising God. Now you say, why would he do that? Well, if you had never walked, maybe you would understand that, all right? He got excited. And so he was walking and leaping and praising God. And when Peter and that man came out of the temple, a crowd gathered, and they said, that's the guy that used to beg right outside the temple. And how did that happen? Peter preached the gospel and said to them in Acts 3, 19 and 20, therefore repent and return that your sins may be washed away. The times and seasons of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord so that he may send Jesus, the Christ appointed for you. And many people got saved that day. You know, on the day of Pentecost, does anybody remember how many people got saved on the day of Pentecost? 3,000, that's right. 3,000 men got saved. And the Bible says others could have been saved too. But on this day, it rose now. It wasn't 5,000 that got saved this day, but it went up to 5,000 men just in Jerusalem that were now saved after Peter shared the gospel. And so the Jews, when they saw all these people becoming Christians, they got mad and they became jealous, and they arrested Peter and John. And they told them, stop speaking and preaching in the name of Jesus. Well, they might as well have been talking to a brick wall, amen? <laughs> I love what they said. Peter and John answered and said, Acts 4, 19 and 20, whether it's right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge, for we cannot, not we will not, we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. We've seen too much. We saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. We saw Jesus ascend back to heaven. We've seen too much, and we've heard too much, and we are not going to keep silent. We're going to tell him, kill us. You do whatever we want to. You kill us, there'll be five more of us rise up in our place. God was using these men. And when they returned to the other Christians, they all gathered together 
and they prayed. I don't have time to read all of their prayer, but you ought to go back and read it. But here's how it ended. Let's go back to our text again. Acts 4, 29. And now, Lord, and you ought to just read what they had already prayed. It was it's special. Take note of their threats. Grant that your bondservants may speak your word with all confidence. They're not asking for protection. They're asking for power to share the gospel. While you extend your hand to heal, my wife prays this for me every day. While you extend your hand to heal, signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed. Say it with me. And when they had prayed. How many of you know that things are different after you pray than they were before you prayed? The devil doesn't care about you just hanging around church, but he doesn't, he'll fight you tooth and toenail to keep you from praying. But don't you do it. When they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together, was shaken. What if this room started shaking? You'd say, I'd run. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You'd fall on your face and worship the Lord is what you would do. The place where they had gathered together was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak the Word of God with boldness. They said, Jesus... Help us to be faithful to share your gospel. Help us to be a bold, vocal witness for Christ Jesus. Help us to speak God's word and unleash God's power. Did you know God wants to unleash his power in your life? Some of you have a marriage that is really not doing very well. What's the best thing you can do for your marriage? I'm not against going for counseling and all that. But I know this, that's not enough. Start praying the Word of God over your marriage. Start speaking the Word of God over your marriage. God wants to give you hope for your future. He wants you to fight and defeat every giant in your life. Maybe you've got a child that is going wayward. Maybe your boss or some co-worker is not treating you right. Maybe you have a physical illness and you're struggling and you say, oh God, I want to be faithful to you in this time. And the devil is attacking you. But Jesus Christ, greater is Jesus who is in you than the devil who is in the world. And the Bible says if you'll start speaking the word of God and praying the word of God and just singing the Word of God. Oh, my friend, that the devil can't handle the Word of God. Do you remember when Jesus was being tempted? You can read about it in Luke chapter 4 and also in Matthew chapter 4. Three different times the devil tempted Jesus. And the Bible says every time Jesus said, it is written. Say that with me. It is written. And he quoted three verses out of Deuteronomy. He quoted the Word of God. Why? The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit, and it slashes through every demonic activity. When you speak the Word of God, you unleash the power of Almighty God. Again, maybe you're dealing with with an illness. Maybe you're tired of living alone. Maybe you say, I really want to finish my education. Nothing wrong with that. Some of you are struggling in your marriage. You got a child that's off course. You're having a hard time paying your bills. What am I going to do? Well, the first thing you do is every, any problem you've got, just speak the word of God over it and when you do, you unleash God's power. I believe God wants to bless his children. I believe that. You know, I love blessing my kids. I just love it. I just love to call them up. And they know by now that I don't call them for anything. 
I just want to hear their voice. And you know the Lord loves you. If you love your children that much, don't you think God loves you way more than that? God wants to hear your voice. I just like to hear their voice. I just enjoy hearing them and listening to what they're doing and being around them. If I, being evil, know how to give good gifts to my children, how much more will my Heavenly Father give what is good to me if I ask Him? God wants you to live in faith and in His favor. He wants to bless you. Why? So you can be a blessing to other people. God wants to bless you. He wants you every day to pick up your Bible. I like to say this. I, I tell Donna, I'm going to go take a Bible bath. I'll be back in a while. And I just let the Word of God, which is the water of God, just pour all over me. And you know what? My mind gets clean. And I don't worry. When I'm reading the Bible, I don't worry. The Word of God is doing its work in my life. Don't just read a verse a day. I know some of you have something on your table, and it's a verse a day. Oh, I need my verse for the day. You know, if Donna brought me a little two-inch piece of bacon and said, here's breakfast, I wouldn't say it out loud, but I'd think, you've lost your mind. I'll eat that in two seconds. Where's the rest? Where's the oatmeal? Where's the bacon? Where's the eggs? Where's the omelet? Talk to me, baby. I'm hungry. I don't act like you're so holy out there. God wants you not just to take a verse or two a day. I think you need to at least read a chapter a day in the Word of God. I've got a one-year Bible. It's a chronological Bible. We're going to be going through it next year. I'll be preaching through it. But I like to read that chronological Bible. I'm about a month ahead, and I try to read one or two entries in it every day. And it takes me a little while. That's okay. It's all right. And then I like to talk to the Lord in prayer after I take my Bible bath. You know, you ought to spend at least 20 or 30 minutes every day with the Lord reading the Bible. And some of you can take more time than that. Read it. Read the Bible. Study it. Memorize it. Meditate on it. Listen to it preached. Oh, if you want to be blessed, go on YouTube and listen to Billy Graham. My soul, though he's dead, yet doth he speak. What great sermons. Just get your mind in the Word of God. And before, before you do anything else, get in the Word of God. And speak God's Word all day long. Unleash His power. God spoke. You just go read Genesis 2. God spoke the Word of God and everything in our universe and our solar system took place. You can read about it day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. Then on the seventh day he rested. But the Bible says over and over, then God said. Say it with me. Then God said. I've got it all written down. I was going to read it all to you. don't have time. But I tell you what. God, when he spoke his word, everything in the universe was created. There's power in the spoken word of God. And you need to walk through your house and just speak the word of God. You have intentions in the, the home, speak the word of God. Tensions at work, speak the word of God. Come into this place, speak the word of God. All day long. Praying, oh God, oh God, I ask you to help me. Dealing with an illness, speak the word of God. I've got scriptures I pray every day to be healed. I speak the word of God over this cancer. I don't call it my cancer anymore because it's not mine. I don't want it, all right? I'm, I'm rejecting it out of my body. You say, you've lost your mind. No, I got my mind. 
my mind's in the right place. Don't worry about my mind, all right? My mind's in the Word of God, and I'm going to speak God's Word, and I'm going to unleash His power. Speak His Word. The Bible says in Psalm 119, 105, read it with me off the screen, would you please? Can we put that up there? Read it with me. Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Aren't you glad that as Christians, we don't have to act like a victim. We are victorious, amen? We are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us, amen? You say, well, what's the takeaway? Well, I've said it so many times, I don't know what to tell you. All week long, stop talking about the problem. Stop it. What you talk about is what's going to grow in your life. Out of the mouth doth the, the mind speak, does the spirit speak. Speak the word of God this week. Just get you some scriptures and just start praying. Now, if you're driving, be careful. But pray. Take the sword of the Spirit. Pray it, speak it, claim it, live in it, and let God's living word be your refuge. And I'm telling you, when you speak God's word and unleash God's power, just like those people, the place where you've gathered together will be shaken, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit, and you'll speak the word of God even more with boldness. Speak God's word, unleash God's power. Can we give him praise this morning for that? Amen.